here. So this is going to be a spring summer get ready with me. I kind of what I've been doing with my looks over the last couple of weeks when we've been enjoying this lovely sun. Now if you like the look of this today, it has a little pop of colour in it, then I am going to show you how I've created this. It is very, very easy, very, very simple. But also I've kind of bought a few new bits and bobs which I've hoped to slip in to where I use more middle to high end range things. So for example, I love Glossier Halo Scope, but you can't go into a shop and swatch Glossier Halo Scope. It also costs you £18, and unless you're ordering anything else from Glossier, £18 for one stick highlighter isn't the cheapest. So I've kind of, sorry I've got hair on my face. So I've kind of looked at things that are more available and more affordable for this look. And hopefully I've swapped things in and managed to get good dupes for them. I also have to apologise because I did actually make this video and the start of it got cut off. I don't know how, I don't know what happened, put my memory card in, it was gone. So, I have a full face on just now but so you know what happened, um, I was speaking about the Kiehl's Glow Formula and the number 7 Instant Results Radiance, Instant Illusions Rapid Radiance Bam. Not a new item for me, however, I think very comparable. This has got a pink iridescence to it, this has got much more of a golden bronze iridescence to it, but both give you a beautiful glow to your skin. This is much cheaper, this is obviously kind of middle market, kind of edging on high range, I think it's about £40, this is closer to the £15-£20 mark. Both very good and this is what I used. Then I went on to talk about the It's Cosmetics CC Cream, which obviously has an SPF of 50 in it. And I find It Cosmetics CC Cream to be more of a thicker, heavier, hydrating type of foundation slash CC cream. For me that works really well, but what I was looking for was a comparable dupe for that. And then I go on to speak about um, the number 7 BB cream and so forth, so I'm very sorry. You've also heard me speak about the number 7 Beautiful Skin Cream, the BB Cream, mine's in dry to very dry and I use the colour Fair, but recently I've seen number 7 on Instagram and it's a little bit of an Instagram made me buy it thing which I'm not that susceptible to, but the number 7 Hydra Luminous. Now this claims it's a foundation, moisturising foundation. Um, it has SPF of 15 which is not SPF of 50, annoyingly, but I can use a skin cream with SPF 30 in it, you know, I can use other things that have the SPF in it and then use this. So this is new, uh, it claims on the back it has vitamins A, C and E together with grapeseed oil to moisturise. It's a lightweight foundation, it is a water-like foundation and it says after four weeks of use 90% said bare skin looked healthier, 90% said bare skin felt moisturised and 84% said bare skin looked brighter. All very good claims, and obviously I'm going to use it today and haven't been using it for four weeks, but the then starts to question me, if your skin looks that good, then why, why are you wearing foundation? I don't know. So I'm going to give this a go. I also got it in Warm Ivory, which is the colour that I wear in the Radiance Foundation from number 7. I've also spoke about that before. Um, and we will give this a go and see how it is. Now it is very liquidy, I have to say. Um, this will probably give me a little bit more colour to my face than, oh, than as pale as I am, uh, but I don't mind that because I'm kind of looking for this slightly bronzed glow. Now I don't use a brush to put this on, I always use my fingers for foundations, especially the first time I'm trying them because I feel like you need to know how it feels going onto your skin. I know there'll be plenty of people who'll be like, oh my god, you're using your fingers, but actually, I really like to know how this feels going on your skin. Okay, so on first impression, I'm really quite impressed with that. Um, I don't know if you can see this little strip here. You know that way when cats sometimes they're all happy and they're and then they just go for a bite of you. My cat was doing that. She was all soaking into my face, and then she decided she would have a chomp on my cheek. I don't know if you can see that there. But um, it's covered relatively well, you can still see little bits, but equally it doesn't feel like a heavy foundation, it just feels like a tinted moisturiser. Also, I feel like sometimes when I put on things with my fingers, 
be even the it's cosmetic cc cream i do have to go in after with a brush just to blend out slight streaks or a sponge just to go around the nose this looks really really even there doesn't seem to be any streakiness at all which i'm really really surprised about and very impressed actually i think that looks amazing to start off um okay we'll give it the four weeks and see if it does all these other miraculous things but on the surface of it i think that's very illuminating that might be the stuff underneath it but i'm really really pleased with how that looks on my skin i think that looks natural and then yeah i like it i really like it so I, i'm looking at my mirror down here if you see me doing that that's what i'm doing so as I said, the second step is my glossy concealer. I can't do anything about that, so I'm just going to whiz through and you don't have to watch because you've seen it all before. Okay, so moving on from there, I would usually go into kind of cheeks and highlight if you if you want to do these things. So this is Glossy Halo Scope. Mine's is absolutely done to within an inch of its life. I tried to scoop some out as well. It's gone. I can't like try and kid on that there's any left. But I seen initially Alana Davidson speaking about Burt's Bee All Aglow Bam. And the reason that I was quite interested in this is because I've tried Clinique's stick highlighter. I've tried Collection stick highlighter. I've tried, what's the other one? Maybelline stick highlighters. And I find that they give more of a Tin Man streak effect, very metallic streak effect, as opposed to that kind of sweaty glow that glossy gives now there's a lot of people who like sweaty glow that's flipping horrible no i don't want that i fucking love it so i don't really care i really like looking like you're very hydrated very dewy this makes me sound like a bit of a dick but that dewy glow i love it so when i seen these being spoke about if i can get into it um they also have a bam bit in the middle i don't know if you can see that there like glossy so i was very intrigued to see how this goes. I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand first. Definitely looks like kind of what I'm going for. Kind of sweaty look. I have to say the bam bit in the middle of this looks a bit more oily than the glossy one. But again, I'm not wholly against that. I'm quite into that. So also I know lots of people will go onto the fingers and then put it on I just plop it on my face. I don't really care. I'm there for the grease. I'm into the grease. <laughs> also, a lot of people will say, oh, I don't put it straight on my face because it'll move my foundation about. But generally, I don't wear particularly heavy coverage foundations. I don't find that to be a problem for me. Uh, I then put it on a little bit above my lip. If I'm doing this, I do it on the edge where there's more colour than the actual bam in the middle. Because I feel that it's more of the colour that I need. I got mine in opal mist so there we go this was i want to say 12.99 and the glossy ones are 18 pounds i think obviously you don't have to pay for shipping and you can actually go in and see if you like them in store as well so that's a winner for me and actually i think this is doing exactly what i was hoping it would do this could be a glossy dupe this might be a winner. I think this might be my kind of sweaty highlight of dreams. <laughs> As opposed to the glossy. I still like glossy, but I just thought better to look at other options. And I think that's really, really nice. Right, next up is blush. Now I do have cloud paints from glossy. I have quite a lot of kind of liquid stick style blushes, but I want to go for this slightly watercolor effect. So I'm going to pick this one. It's one that I actually recently kind of decluttered out of my own makeup pile and it is from Sleek and it was in a annoyingly limited edition type thing, Whimsical Wonderland Sweet Cheeks and it is in Lickety Split. Now these are a stick form very much like the Halo Scope or the Burt's Bees highlighter there. Now the texture of this is very difficult to describe. It's kind of like a water... <sighs> like an ice pole I don't even like it's like a watery stick which sounds horrific but actually it gives the most beautiful wash of color kind of watercolor effect on my cheeks now it is quite an orangey color it's quite a coral color I wonder if I can put it here now that's it on my arm there but it just blends out to not an awful lot of anything 
but gives you like this beautiful coral flush on your cheeks and I really really like it. So I'm going to use this but just because obviously I don't think you're going to be able to get this anymore. I think NYX have brought one out called, called a Bear It All Stick or something like that. So if I can find that I'll pop a little picture in and I'll link it below if I can find where you can get it from because those are marketed as a hydrating blush kind of stick and I think that's exactly what this is. So I'm really sorry if you go and see the next one and it's absolutely nothing like this because I genuinely don't know. But I'm gonna go ham with this because it does kind of blend out so easily. Now I could, as I say, use Glossier's Halo Scope. No, Glossier's Halo Scope. I could use the Glossier Cloud Paints, but I don't really have a coral colour in them, so I'm going with this. Now at the moment, yes, I'm aware this looks scary, but fear not, because it blends out to nothing. And I probably pat it more than I do really, like, spread it across my face. Now, if you did watch Lisa Eldridge's um, watercolour blush thing, you'd be like, <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of shit. <laughs> because hers was beautiful, absolutely beautiful as it is, because she's a bit fantastic. Whereas I am just a girl in my bedroom putting some makeup on my face. Overall though, I really like the effect that gives. It's beautiful, it's a nice flush of kind of orange to the face. Only thing I would say is be careful you do take it into your hairline the same way you would a bronzer because you run the risk of looking a little bit odd with a tight line. Now I own this kind of cream blush palette from e.l.f. as well. This is the light one, is it light? Soft, this is a soft one. Now I'm going to go in with quite a prominent pink colour just on the apples of my cheek here. As I say, Lisa Eldridge done this with powder as opposed to creams but I really like creams, I really like looking more dewy and a little bit sweaty as I've said a few times already. So we're going with this and then I'll maybe put a bit of powder or something over the top. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. And then I'm going to take the more kind of nude tawny colour and just take that up through here because I don't want it to look too crazy colourful but I would like it to look like I've got some sculpting there of some sort and that would give me more of a bronzed look. Now if you feel this is starting to get a bit OTT just take your concealing sponge again whatever you've used use the excess of it just over here because I feel at the moment mine's is coming a little far down so I just want to blend some of that out of it. I'm then going to take this Revolution palette, I think this is the sugar and spice one, on a clean brush, a clean kind of blush brush, and take some some of the coral and some of the pink again. Let's go for it. But I'm really going to tap the brush off because I don't want this to go crazy too quickly. And Blush powders are not my strong point. So I'm using the coral one first. I'm then going to take some of this really like bright pink very lightly on another brush so that I don't mix the colours up. Now this is really, really strong, this blusher. So let's be very careful about how I do this. Okay, so at the moment to me it's looking a little bit too much so I'm just going to go in with a plain clean buffing brush to tone that all down a little bit. 
and make it look a little bit more flushed and like this side's really pink so I need to really blend this out quite a bit. I'm then going to take a tiny bit of the coral blush that I used again just through the socket just because I think that will tie things in a little bit. Very lightly on a very big fluffy brush. Yep. And I feel that there needs to be a little bit of something across my nose. But I'm not sure I want it to be the orange. But I don't want it to be as dark as the pink. So I'm going to take the brush that I was using the coral one on. And go into this more kind of tawny colour here. A little bit more kind of... is slightly pinky mauvey just on my nose to try and tie it in a little bit that's better I'm wondering if it's too bright okay so I'm going to come a little bit closer so you can see so I've kind of just put all in here excuse my eyebrows because yeah they need done but I've kind of just put this colour all around here and again, excuse the cat bite to the face just to give it that kind of watercolour, I don't know, spring-like look I don't really know what it is I'm trying to do but I just feel like this natural kind of wash of colour to your face so there is colour there but it's almost like it could be a natural wash of flush does that make sense? I am going to put some natural colours round about my eyelids but nothing too fancy, uh, just maybe a touch of kind of a really neutral liner or a neutral eyeshadow round about my eyes so I'll do that just now. So next I'm going to go to a powder kind of, I wouldn't say highlight, more of a powder, luminous powder and I'm using the Revolution Radiant Lights palette. This is the thing that I would say is kind of a dupe for the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. I use the one in the middle most of the time. A lot of the time, this one is too kind of bronzy for me and this one's a little bit too golden, but this does come into call sometimes when I need it and sometimes I'll put that on my eyes. But this one in the middle is perfect for me and my skin tone to kind of place everywhere. So now that I have all this oily stuff going on in my face, I don't want everything to slide about. So I pop this right here and I take it just here as well because I still want to be glowing but I don't want to have everything sliding about my face and I feel that this powder does a fantastic job of keeping you look like radiant without looking like the Tin Man. I'm going to take the same powder in the inner corner as well because I think it does a wonderful job of just adding a bit of lightness inside your eye. Then I'm going to curl my lashes. You don't need to watch this. Now I'm going to use the Maybelline Snap Scara. I got this in my latest in Beauty Box. I was thinking about talking about the Essence one that I've got but if I'm honest with you I probably am favouring this one at the moment. This is one of these tubing mascaras that works really well and it's just got a kind of it's half moon shaped brush can you say that? But it's um it's not a rubber one so I can't say it's a direct dupe for roller lash or anything like that but it's definitely affordable it's definitely accessible and I think it's lovely so I'll pop this on. Okay so that's me got the mascara on I really really like this mascara I think it's very very nice and at running the risk of saying it's overtaking my roller lash the thing that I really enjoy about it is it's quite natural it's quite fluttery but it's probably more lengthening than it is volume but I think I would take length over volume a lot of the time. Also I find that it's one of these ones that doesn't fall down onto your face so much. There's a few recently that I've been using and I've found they do that whole falling down onto your face thing and you're having to rub it under your eyes. I've worn this to work and I do 12 and a half hour shifts and I find it's not one that's terribly guilty of that. The only thing I will say is I don't put it on lower lashes for going to work so but I think it's beautiful, I think it's very nice, very natural and I've been really enjoying it so that's the eyelashes. Now this is very like pretty natural kind of okay we're doing watercolour blush type makeup but I want to add a bit of colour in because as I said in my last favourite videos 
I'm really enjoying colour. I picked up two new things from Kiko and it is their automatic eyeliner and coal lasting precision and I got numbers eight and number nine. Now one is very much a kind of teal colour and one is very much a poolside blue. I think for this with the orange I want to go with the teal colour so I'm going to put this in my waterline just for a little bit of something different. Now there may be some of you watching this thinking, oh my god, why did you just do that? But actually, I really like that. I think that's the cool, like, I quite like just having that little pop of something in my waterline. It just makes it look a little bit more different, it's a bit more spring, summer. Makes people kind of look at you a bit more, rather than just be like, oh you just got natural makeup on. And I kind of like that, I really really like that. So. I'm pleased with that and actually it went on really well and I think it was really soft. It has one of these little blender things at the other end but I see absolutely no reason or rhyme to have that there. We be better with a sharpener but otherwise these are really good. I'm very impressed so far. We'll see how long it wears throughout the day though because obviously it's the first time I've used them but I really like that. I think that's very pretty. Okay moving on to lips now. I did pick up in TK Maxx a Lancome Juicy Shaker as opposed to the matte shakers and this one is in grapefruit. Now this obviously is something that is relatively expensive but I picked it up in TK Maxx and I think the colour is probably going to go perfectly with this. It's very sheer, it's a glossy type thing. The only thing I want to speak about is the e.l.f. kind of lip oils. I think these are very compatible. This is not sticky like a gloss, this is not sticky like a gloss but it gives the effect of a gloss. So mine's the one I've got is in Nude Kiss um, I don't think it comes in any striking bright colours like this. I think it maybe comes in a pink and something else. Uh, I've got the plum version as well, which sometimes I wear in the autumn months. But I'm going to put this one on today, but I just thought it was important to give these a shout out because they are very, very likened to these and very accessible and very affordable. If you do see anything in TK Maxx and you think, oh, that's high end, just make sure you've got the right colour in the right boxes because people go through them like absolute scavengers. There we go, just another kind of natural pop of colour on the lips and I like it being a bit more juicy in the summertime. So I think that's me, I quite like that, I think that's really nice actually. Yeah, very spring, summertime appropriate. It's kind of been my go-to, I've been using a few new bits today obviously and the foundation slash BB moisturising type cream stuff from number seven, so far very impressed with. The Burt's Bees stick, very impressed with. The eyeliner so far, although I'll need to see how it wears, very impressed with. And I think that's it, because I have been using the Snap Scatter, I can't say that's a new thing, but really impressed with them, very pleased with how this has turned out, and I like it, and I think it's a nice alternative to wearing a bronzer. It's a bit different, and I'm really enjoying it. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, I hope you've took something from it, I hope it gives you a little idea to play with colour in a slightly different way without being full on drag artist. You can use colours in other ways without doing the full blown, you know, big lashes. Which by the way, there is absolutely nothing wrong with. I am not feeling, spilling any tea, sharing any shade, anything like that. If that is for you, go for it. If you're someone like myself who feels I can't wear that on a day-to-day -day basis, but I would like to play with colour, then this is more my cup of tea. Lots of people might find it quite boring, so <laughs> if you do, I apologise. If you have liked this video though, then please give a little thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button if this seems like the kind of thing you enjoy watching. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter, um, and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye!